rooster. <laughs> Welcome back to Jen's kitchen. We're here. Okay, I have to start it off. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back to Jen's kitchen. Today's episode is going to be Rochester themed. We're going to be making garbage plates and apple crisps. Rochesterian. I don't know where we found her, but she's here. So everyone introduce Haley. Welcome, Jennifer. And, and we have Daniel, who is only here because he enjoys food. It's true. Come on, Dan. It's true. It's true. So first we're going to make garbage plates. And since Haley is from Rochester, what do you know about garbage plates? What do I know about yes. them? Some describe describe them. Are they delicious? <laughs> the garbage plates are amazing. I just they're a Rochester staple or you know like an area staple. Uh, traditionally, it's mac salad and home fries with either two hot dogs or two hamburgers or cheeseburgers on top, with also a meat hot sauce on the top and then mustard, ketchup, onions, pickles, etc. So it's. Uh, around a 3,000 calorie meal, Thank so God. it's very hard for one person to finish, but uh, I've never had one. You've never I'm had one? I'm excited to try it. Love you, you have one? Oh yeah, I've got one yeah. in Rochester. They're classic. They're yes. so good. We're going to be making the meat sauce first, and for the meat sauce recipe, you're going to need a teaspoon of oil, onion chopped, <laughs> <laughs> tablespoon of brown sugar, Six ounce can of tomato paste, black pepper, cayenne pepper, mm -hmm. chili powder, mysterious cumin, allspice, <laughs> cinnamon, and ground cloves. We do not have all these ingredients, but we will modify it to what we have. We looked everywhere. Just give you a bunch of No, we went to three different places. Three. And no one had it. So I'm colorblind and can't tell when meat is cooked. So I just burn it all the time, oh, um, no. just to make sure it's done. <laughs> oh my god. So someone else gets to do that part. Hashtag colorblind frog. Be Before we start the hot, the, the meat sauce, we're going to put it in the hash browns because those take a while. Yeah. And we're not making them fresh, we're just going to buy some frozen oh, ones. Please. I've never cooked tubed meat before, and that, that, when we put it in, that's why I don't cook tubed meat. It, it looks disgusting. So, what's your favorite thing to eat? Uh, tomato paste or brown sugar? That's a vicious job. Brown sugar. After eating this, you probably will be dead by the evening. Oh, look at the time. So, 
And who invented the garbage plate? Do you know who invented the garbage plate? So the place is called Nick Tahoe's. Um, the inventor might have been a man named Alex Tahoe. But the story goes that, you know, they just threw a bunch of stuff together, whatever was left in the kitchen, and that created the garbage plate. So the classic place to go in Rochester for a garbage plate is Nick Tahoe's. I have just never been. Have you been to Henrietta's? I've heard that's a big one. Henrietta's? Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of like hot places though. There's a lot of places called like Reese Hots, Henrietta Hots, Hot Hots. Is. The bottom is what you see. Like I can see that there's some like red yeah. pieces over there, but you totally can't. You should do this once we do the burgers too. I want to see because this is almost all cooked anyway. Now we're going to add the tomato paste, brown sugar, and say. one cup of beef broth. What? yellow mustard and one teaspoon of kosher salt as well as a half teaspoon of ground black pepper and we need one stalk of celery but I said in the grocery store yesterday I hate celery we're not putting that in so no celery screw celery um, two tablespoons of sweet relish two tablespoons of chopped peppers we're gonna use red pepper and a pound of macaroni which is like quite, quite a bit more than a pound teaspoons ground cinnamon, one teaspoon of lemon juice, one cup light brown sugar, three quarter cups of old fashioned oats, three quarter cups of all purpose flour, half a cup of unsalted butter, and a pinch of salt. So I have some old stinky pears that we're also going to put into this apple crisp because we don't like to waste all food them? here. No, we we'll probably don't. Three, three, half and half. Yeah. We probably, we can make two, are we doubling the rest? No, we're, we're just, we're just doing all of them. Okay. The first oh, step, let's get to wash your hands. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Oh, that'll burn you. Her water is hot. Yeah, it actually will scald your skin. Look at you all the apples. At least like four, okay. at least four like to five more. <laughs> 
I'm semi-allergic to apples. Uh, oh yeah, try we'll get a live allergic reaction. <laughs> now we're going to be washing the pears and apples. You can actually, I actually like the stickers. They have the best flavor. So um, leave the stickers on your produce. You can eat them. They made them edible. I don't know what they're made out of, but it's probably a lie. It's don't fun. eat your stickers. They're probably made out of plastic. <laughs> Put a graphic. Don't the stickers. First, we're going to preheat the oven to 350. Excuse me. I'm away, like this whole time. Let's find the peelers. We have one shaped like we have one shaped like an apple and one shaped like a carrot. Okay, so you guys can start peeling, peeling things. two knives going at a time, just for safety. So to cut an apple, you want to do a cut. I totally this? got the core in there. I'm just gonna, are we slicing these like a certain way? Um, okay, so I would probably do like the four cuts to avoid oh. the core, and then I once they're like this, half, Did not do that for this. quarters. What do we have to for a pair? In yeah, pears are weird shaped. Uh, I don't know, how big should they be? So see if it helps. Okay. Cut them like french fries. <laughs> Remember so guys, you don't, don't get, get your apple, apple seeds in your mouth <laughs> because they have arsenic in them, which is a poison. In order to make sure- Here, we're gonna put this over here. That you, in order to make sure that your apple slices don't get brown and nasty, you pour a tiny little sprinkle Skosh. of lemon juice. And for some reason, that stops the reaction of it turning the oxidation of the apple and pear. Just put a little lemon juice in your life. You won't regret it. Any other restaurants that like aren't like public? Oh, <laughs> Rochester. Yeah, Rochester yeah. specific? Because I don't want to name like chains. Yeah, I want to be like, you know, like Rochester. Yeah, like What's Rochester. The last one? Um, you know what? what is a really good uh, Mexican restaurant in Rochester? It's called Salinas. Um, that's really good. Um, Blue Ridge Grill is in Greece. That place is really good. Um, Oh, Swill Burger is super cool. It's a burger place slash arcade slash bar. Um, that's super fun.
were supposed to divide the cinnamon. We did not do that. But it's okay. Oh, it's, so it's just real. But we did have more. Oh. We did have more apples than okay. than okay. it called for. So no, it all levels out. When you're cooking, it's meat, all relative. When you're cooking meat in place, it's important to make sure that you meat in place, even if it's the same ingredient, in separate little bowls. So we're going to get the brown sugar, yeah, oats, really totally brown sugar, sense. oats, flour, sure. and cinnamon, butter. salt, and cold chopped butter. It's cold. And it's chopped. Good. Good. It's a 
It gets my seal of approval. How could it not? It's butter, fruit, and sugar. I think so. the apples definitely work a little bit better than the peach pear. Yeah. Um, I think I'm mostly pear in this one. There's a little bit more flavor in the apple. The pear just kind of tastes like the cinnamon. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Jen's Kitchen. Thank you, Dan and Haley, for joining us. Yes, authenticating yes, our fun. garbage plate. Yeah. Everything was really good. Better than last time. Yeah. We actually cooked everything. Everything was cooked <laughs> properly. Crazy, I know. You didn't think it would happen, but it did. Right. See ya. <laughs> See ya. Okay. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. take you on a tour of my copious collection of plants today. So we're gonna start over here on the windowsill. So this plant right here <laughs> is a beautiful golden pothos. So that is an Epipremnum aureum. And so here you can see that it has the yellow variegation, meaning giving it the name golden pothos. It's a voracious grower, it drinks a lot of water, it's very big. Going over to the windowsill, we have an aloe vera from the luxurious Home Depot. And so this is a great tool to have for chefs in the kitchen because if you ever get a burn, you just rip off a tip and use the aloe vera juices on your burns. Right here is a dracaena. And so this is a beautiful tree native to Africa. And as you can see, it's putting out some nice new foliage with a beautiful pink coloration. And scooting back here, we have a, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It's cactus. This thing wasn't there, and then it was. And next on the windowsill, we have a syngonium, also known as an arrowhead plant. And so, yeah, this is a very pretty plant that looks like arrows. And this one is also, than a uh, syngonium, but it is a darker coloration. This one right here is called a cyclamen. It's not doing that well, but it is putting out new leaves, so that's a good sign. And next up is some herbs that I am working on growing for a hydroponic setup. Here you can see we've got some oregano on its way. The cilantro is really thriving. It's growing its first cilantro-y shaped leaves. And the chives suck. The chives aren't doing well. I don't know what's wrong with them. But um, the basil is really coming in lovely right there. You can see this is a jade plant. It's a type of succulent. In bright sun, it kind of gets a beautiful red coloration on the edges. And I stole it from a concert. So steal plants, guys. It's fun. And this next one is called a starfish sansevieria. So your typical snake plant, this is a variation on that. It grows in a starfish shape. And I call it salad fingers, cause you know, you know why. And up next we have a peperomia rubella. So this one was quite small when I got it and now it's really just taken over the place. It's gotten huge, it's in this little mouse little mouse guy, I almost dropped it. Okay, <laughs> and next we just have a nice, pretty succulent. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's pretty. Got a, got a dead leaf in there. Hang on, there we go. And further down the line, this is a Marble Queen Pothos. So it's different from the gold. It kind of has this pale white spotty variegation on there. The new leaves are very variegated because it's got getting such good sunlight. And if you go down here, this is called a silver satin pothos. It has a beautiful shine on the leaves. This one has grown very well for me. And yeah, it's just, just pretty. Down there, that's the plant I hate. It just, it's a mo mother of thousands. It just keeps putting out babies and it's ruining my life. I want to kill it, but I feel bad, so it's been <laughs> carrying on with the plant tour. This euphorb, it uh, has leaves. It's not doing well because it loses its leaves in the winter. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> it loses its leaves in the winter time, but it's okay. And lastly, we have the quarantine corner. All of these little bitches are giving me a really hard time lately. 
And coming into the kitchen, some of the plants you saw in the background of our show today are a Hoya Crimson Queen. It's called a queen because the variegation comes from the outside, so it just has variegated edges. And you can see that it has some beautiful new little pink leaves coming from the its uh, stems. And over here, this would be a Haworthia succulent. It's really grown well for me. It's gotten quite a lot taller than it was when I got it. And here's another African violet. This is what they should look like. They should have pretty beautiful flowers. That one over there is a little piece of crap. And right here is a Pilea peperomoides, often called a um, saucer plant. And it's also called a friendship plant because as you can see, it's putting out many new, oh God. <laughs> many new little baby plants down there. So they're easy to propagate and share with your friends. And so this concludes my plant tour part one. I do have more plants, but we're gonna save those for the future, so. Oh yes, there are more. <laughs> I have a problem. Please send me to an asylum, I beg you. Okay, and back to you guys in the kitchen. <laughs> You guys done being children! <laughs> <laughs> oh hey, I didn't expect to see you back so soon. Well, look at this! You know, the world in turmoil, but, you know, just wanted to say, I don't know what to say, Jen's kitchen ran a little shorter than we thought it would due to these unprecedented times, but it was a really fun time. Oh god, I'm getting emotional. Okay, I'm over it. But... <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of fun in this kitchen. We were saying goodbye, moving out, moving on to... Oh god, I can't do that. <laughs> Crying. Oh yeah, I got it together. just wanted to say that this has been a really fun time. I'm really proud of the, you know, foods we made. Wish we could have made a few more, but, you know, life goes like that. And 